What is up guys, Dan the Marketing Man here. This video is for everybody watching right now who wants to make six figures in the next 12 months. This is it, you don't have to watch anything else. I'm gonna teach you every single step that's gonna take you from zero to six figures. I'm going to be covering exactly what I've been doing on this channel for the last year and a half, which is documenting my journey from my nine to five job where I was, transitioning into freelancing, transitioning into owning a real business, an agency that's taken me from zero to $260,000 in the first 12 months. So I'm gonna teach it to you guys. And they say the people that you wanna learn from are people who were just there. If you want to run a mile in five minutes, talk to the guy that just accomplished that goal. Okay, so if you guys wanna hit these similar results, I'm probably the best person to talk to right now. So with that being said, guys, make sure to give this video a like and subscribe, hit the bell because it's free and it really helps me. Let's get into the video. Like I said in the beginning, we're starting from the basics zero to six figures that's what we're going to be talking about doing and you don't have to do it just through one method there's so many different ways to do this and especially in smma so let's get into it the first thing we're going to talk about right now is our offer okay because like i was just saying there's so many different ways to do it and i'm going to talk about a couple different ones that maybe you've seen me do or even other people do so i'm going to start with the first two that really took me there from the start the first one is a high ticket offer and in this high ticket offer it's basically lead generation and lead nurture systems so you guys have seen on my channel okay i'm offering lead generation and also lead nurture using go high level which is our crm that we're using so we just kind of position our offer differently because we focus more on the conversion of the lead rather than generating it because almost 95 percent of the clients that we worked with are in real estate and that is a saturated niche which is not bad but it just means they've all been burnt before like 95 percent of the people that i talk to have been burnt and that's okay but that's what we kind of use to leverage our offer because we want our offers to be unique okay and that's kind of hard to teach in this video because how do you teach innovation if there was a way to teach innovation everybody would be billionaires okay so that's kind of the challenge now that you're in business okay if you're watching this video it's because you're interested in starting a business that can actually scale to six figures so you want to be different and there's a lot of people doing the same thing which is fine but ultimately you have to be unique in some way some people rely on brand some people rely on mechanism like the thing that they have is unique or their brand is unique so how are you unique what are your ways of doing that so you want to position your offer depending on the niche that you're in and that's going to take like a lot of research which we're going to get into next but the first offer is high ticket we're basically doing lead generation plus lead nurture let's talk about maybe a low ticket one one of the low ticket offers that we're doing is lead nurture right we're setting them up in high level creating automations tailored to their business email marketing sms marketing you guys have seen me do this in the past to get agency clients for our agency so that's why i believe in these low ticket offers because they're so amazing lead nurture plus setting up the ads so it's almost like a done with you service so this one basically would go for around 7.99 and what would be included in that is high level and then also a one-time fee of 4.99 to set up their facebook ads one time and all they're going to be paying for every single month is high level so that's another downsell that we have here on agency it works very well and i also want to talk about like the difference between these two just for a second so in this case these people were paying minimum you know 2.5k plus that's like the minimum right there that we were charging and the low ticket very much gets slept on i just want to say that right now so the difference between these two there's pros and cons to each so for high ticket these guys were staying for about two to four months for the low ticket these guys were actually staying for six to 12 months. So already you can see a humongous pro and con. One person is gonna stay longer, one person is gonna stay shorter, but the pro and the con, I guess on the flip side for both, is that this one makes way more money than the low ticket, obviously. And then we'll talk about like some, some stuff maybe that you didn't even consider yet. Think about this now. Now that you have this context with the high ticket people staying not as long, but they're paying more. Opposite side of that is low ticket because they're staying for six to 12 months and you don't make as much, but here's the, the biggest difference, okay? It is the price because these guys are gonna be way more work for the high ticket, but you're gonna have less clients. For these guys, you're gonna have way less work, but they're gonna be paying you not a lot. So let's say I have four clients, right? If they're paying 2,500, basically that's 10K. And we net about half of that in a month. It's more headaches, but it's less clients. So you kind of have the capacity to deal with that. For the low ticket, I know you probably can't see because my face here, let me move this. And then for the low ticket, they're staying for six to 12 months, but they're paying 300 bucks per month for high level only. So you're basically just selling it as a software. So if I had 10 clients, if I signed up 10 clients every single month for 10 months, that's 3K profit every single month. 
because the only thing you're paying for is high level, which I think is like 297 and you can have unlimited accounts, even if you wanted to upgrade it a little bit so you can make it your own, make it look like, you know, SAST version, right? You can actually pay, I think like 600 bucks a month. So you're basically making 3000 and you're paying 600 and you're maybe providing some sort of support because for the most part, high level has articles for everything they need. You can also send them videos how to set up their CRM. You could also set it up for them and have like extra fees on that. So now let's do the math. So I'm gonna sign up 10 clients every single month for the next six months because that's how long they stay on average. Let's do some math, 300 times 10, here at 3,000. But if you do that six times, you'll be at $18,000 net. And that's not even including the 499 upsell that we have because we're doing 799. So if we did that same math, 799 times 10, you're at eight Gs, but there's a little bit that goes into that because if you cannot run ads, you have to pay somebody to set that up, which you can actually find some very decent people to set up ads on Fiverr for like 250. So you're still making 50% commissions on the upsell, which is the setup ad for 499. So the margins for the low ticket are way higher. We're talking like 80, 90% margins. And then the high ticket, you're talking like 50, 40% margins. So there's the pros and cons to both right away. So let's move on to another section of this map. So that's the first part. So so it's literally about what your offer is. Are you gonna do high ticket? Are you gonna do low ticket? You know the pros and cons, you can kind of make it there. So as far as like different things that you could do, you could do like lead nurture, you know, reputation management, social media posting, branding, you could do video editing, SMS blast, email. There's so many different things you could offer, but that's essentially the basics of how to price it for that niche. And let me just add one more thing too, like on pricing, depending on how much they make is how much you can charge. Someone who does credit repair, they're probably gonna make three to 400 bucks per client that they have. So you would obviously charge them maybe something like the low ticket thing that I was showing you. Or if they're making five to $7,000 per deal, like in solar, that's a good niche. Then you can charge a high ticket offer. So that's how you should price those offers based on the niche, which brings me to my next point, which is research. And I like to do a lot of the research while doing outreach. So let's get into this part because there's so many different things that you can do for outreach, which we're going to talk about all the ways that I've done it. And before I ever spent a single dollar on ads, I had already made $150,000 doing stuff organically. For example, if we're talking about cold calling, this is a very quick way to get clients. It's a very quick way to do anything. I mean, obviously getting on the phone with somebody is much faster than like doing a social media outreach or like texting because you're you're there, you're with them right then. So just a couple things that I recommend for cold calling, if you're brand new to it, like I was, do 100 dials per day, okay? If you're doing it right, that's gonna take you one, maybe two hours max, okay? For me, it would usually take about an hour to do 100 per day and that's because I was using a dialer so look up things like phone burner go high level has a dialer which is very good also but the reason why you want to do this in the beginning is because you can build up phone skills so if you need to learn for example what their sales process is like you could actually ask them what that is on the phone so for example if you're reaching out to real estate professionals like I was you could ask them something like hey you know what's the process for getting a loan what's the process for purchasing a home what is the process for refinancing a home and they'll take you through it. So get phone skills, ask good questions so you can get insights on what their problems are. That way you can make your offer better or position it in a way that you know makes you stand out from every other agency. So phone skills is super important to build, just talking to people, building relationships, building trust on the phone, building value on the phone, having urgency, right? All these different things that actually build confidence in your everyday life can be learned on the phone by speaking to people. One thing to do when you're cold calling also is like focus on the next thing. And so this is gonna bring us to like the next tab, getting 1% better every single day, if you suck at the script, like you don't even know what the hell you're saying, then you want to memorize that script, like read it again, again, again. When I'm actually doing training with my students or even cold callers that I hire, it's like, okay, read the script. Hey, this is Dan. I was just reaching out. Okay, do it again. Hey, this is Dan. I was just reaching out. Do it again. We literally go back and forth again and again, like six times in a row. And it's like, they, they almost get like freaked out. They're like, why the hell is this guy making me say the same thing? Because I want you guys to memorize it. When Drake drops his 90th album of the year, yeah. you guys are going to go on genius. Hold on. Let me look up the lyrics before I listen to the album. And you guys are literally going to sit there and repeat the the songs that you like until you learn the lyrics. You have to do the same thing. If I'm on the phone today and I make 100 dials and they all flop and they all suck, perfect. I want you to do that because you're gonna gain a little bit of thick skin, which you need to have on the phone. And then also you're gonna cringe when you listen back to your calls, which is gonna give you even more motivation to get better. I love listening back to my own calls because I, when I hear that I suck, I'm like, no! And then I never make that same mistake again. And actually psychologists say, if you're over 25, for some reason, adults learn best through trauma. If you're below, the age of 25, you actually have a higher chance of learning a skill than someone who's older than 25. But again, that doesn't mean that people older than 25 are done for. It just means we learn in different ways. So personally for me, and I'm not even 25, I'm just saying, when I hear myself on the phone and I suck, I wanna get better. So like I'll hear myself like, oh my God, I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay, focus on the script. 
Then when he got the script down, I, I'm really not handling these early objections. Let's work on these rebuttals. And then once he got the script and your rebuttals down, what's next? Oh man, these guys keep shutting me down. Okay, then let's practice being a little bit more assertive on the phone. Let's change your tone. Let's make you sound like you have a little bit of authority on the phone because people will treat you differently based on how you speak. And that's why speaking is such an important skill to learn having phone skills because if you can't even prospect the right way, nobody's gonna close the deal. Because people are like, all right, well, I'm gonna do cold email because I'm scared of the phone. Cool, do your cold email. What happens when you get them on the sales call? You're gonna be super nervous. You don't even know what to say. So that's why it's super important. But it's also, for my last point, you should not be doing this for a long time. You gotta be grinding this. And if you focus on getting 1% better every day, you can literally get to being a pro within five to seven days. And I only say that because students on my channel in previous interviews that I've done here on my channel, they've gotten deals in two days three days, five days. And one of them actually didn't have any experience. That's how fast you can get a client if you build up that phone skill and you're seriously doing it every single day for at least an hour or two. So I want you to grind this part out as much as you can. That way you can train and delegate because you'll get burnt out cold calling every single day. That's how to do cold calling outreach for whatever your offer is. For our next section, we're gonna be talking about social media outreach, okay? Another opportunity to learn and do research is through social media. So I'm gonna talk about a couple things that you need to do to actually have, be effective when you're prospecting through social media. So I'm, I'm gonna start with the last one, which is profile. So you wanna make sure your profile looks good, okay? Don't have like an anime picture as your profile pic. Get a nice picture of yourself. Even if it's not professional, make sure they can see your face and you look decent enough to speak to as a human, okay? That's all we're really asking for, just some decency. Make it as professional as you can, but if you can't be like super ultra HD headshot, just do something decent. I mean, I don't even have a professional headshot and yet you're all watching this video. Your profile has to look good. Make sure your bio is relevant to whatever your offer is. So if it's like, I coach coaches, coach coaches. And then they'll be like, okay, this guy coaches, coaches, coaching coaches. You know, that's the person I wanna to talk to. So if that's your offer or whatever, just make sure that your bio is relevant. And if you're on LinkedIn, also they have banners too. So make sure you can try to put something in the banner. If not, again, just something decent. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it just has to look professional because if you're prospecting on social media, they're gonna click on your profile. Once your profile is looking good, we're gonna start with outbound. And you can do stuff like joining Facebook groups related to your niche. So like dentists, chiropractors, painters, whatever your niche is, you can start joining Facebook groups, doing cold outreach there, commenting, being part of the group, adding value. That's one really good way to get appointments, which is through Facebook groups, because you can literally see in Facebook new members. You can see every single new member joining every single day, and those are the people you wanna reach out to because they're serious. So if they're joining like a chiropractor Facebook group, it's because you know they wanna network, they're serious about growing their business. A lot of times, they'll go to Facebook groups for that. Also in LinkedIn, they do similar things too. Go to their profiles, send a friend request upon exception, send them a DM and do a little bit of outbound stuff. Use a script, hey, you know, I do reputation management for chiropractors. I saw your guys' Google My Business actually has good results and we can make it 10 times better. When can we talk? You know, just something, test it out. My scripts are never perfect the first time I do it either. You gotta do some tests. We're not different than you are. Like a lot of people are like, oh man, the gurus are so smart. Yeah, we are. But like, we're no different than you. We just test more. We just go out and take more action than you do. It's not that we're actually smarter than you. So do the same thing here. When you're prospecting, also ask questions about the sales process. You know, what are some issues that your chiropractic clinic is facing? Ask questions. Even if you're not gonna get them to the appointment, you can still ask questions. And then we're gonna talk about my secret inbound organics formula, which is still free on social media. So earlier I was talking about adding friends. You should be adding like 10 to 20 friends every single day if you can. Sometimes you'll get restricted, but that's like for another video. As long as you're making connections every single day on LinkedIn or making new friend requests with people related to your niche, your offer every single day, here's a cool thing that you can do. On Facebook, you can actually make friend lists and you can make statuses to certain friends lists. So like every single day on LinkedIn, I actually have my assistant Paul and he's posting case studies and testimonials on our feed every single day. And we actually get quite a lot of people who are already pre-sold. Like they've seen maybe like the 12th, 20th, 50th case study or testimonial that we posted on our feed and they're like, all right, well, let me get on. And then when they get on the call, it's basically like they're already closed. Like you just got to collect the money at that point because you're building so much social proof. That's why content is so important. Like you're watching this video. I have stuff on Instagram. LinkedIn, Facebook, where my clients are, where they're gonna be at. So that's a really cool one that you can use for inbound. Also creating a Facebook group is really good, but that's more like long-term. So if you wanna start like getting clients right away, I'm just giving you guys like the quick ways. So maybe I'll do another video on like even better ways, but you already got some pretty good methods right here. And then for the last one, this one is ads. For ads, this is for scaling only, because if you've done these other methods correctly and you've built the phone skill, you've gotten a couple clients already. If you can scale it, you're gonna be unstoppable. Like at that point, you're already getting clients and now it's time to scale, run some ads. 
If you can't run ads, hire somebody to do it for you. I actually hired Kai Bax here on YouTube to build my funnel and help me run ads for the first time. At this point, I actually also hired Jason Wojo to do the same exact thing. Help me build a funnel um, and run some ads because I want to learn from the best. But that's because I know that my offer is working and I can scale it because when they come in from the Facebook ads, they're going to have really high intent. Like they're going to just be already closed. So that's why it's so important that you build up the skill first, because when they come in, dude, you're going to kill it. We've literally made like 10, 12 extra turns on running ads. It's insane. So shout out to those guys. That's the way you do outreach. Okay. This brings me to the next portion of the full agency model, which is sales. Now that we've done our offer, now that we've done outreach, we're getting people interested to schedule a call with us. Now it's time for the sales. So I'm going to talk about three simple things. I have plenty of live sales calls. If you guys want to check those out to see the way that we do it, I'm going to kind of break it down. In essence, you want to do a two call close in the beginning when you're doing cold outreach, because call number one, the cold call doesn't really count. So the cold calls, Hey, are you interested in XYZ? Okay, let's chat. You send them a little bit of information to get them a little, you know, pre-sold. Usually we'll do like a video sales letter. Headline one, we we help predator repair agencies do XYZ headline two without running ads, doing outreach or closing deals. And then like a little video, just me explaining what the offer is. And it's like five to six minutes. It's just some information so that you can explain who you are, what you do and why you even reached out to them. So that's the cold call. Then you get them to call number one, which you've already done on the cold call. Hey, can I follow up later today or tomorrow? Okay, cool. Then we get to call number one. Call number one is to qualify them. Hey, just wanted to see if you had a chance to watch the video that I sent you. Oh no, I didn't watch the video. Okay, cool. That's why I was calling. I just wanted to schedule maybe 10 or 15 minutes with you tomorrow. That way I can show you exactly what we do. And then you have some time to see the video as well. So what time works best? And basically you're getting them on the call number two. And so let's just say that they're like, yeah, call me tomorrow too. Okay, cool. Let me pull up my calendar really quick just to confirm. And also while I'm there or just, you know, kind of as you're asking the question, you know, while I got you on the phone, just cause I'm curious, like how many deals per month are you doing right now? Okay, cool. Just to try to see like if they're qualified, because for example, if I'm working with like a real estate agent, they're probably making like $5,000 per deal. So if they're doing five deals per month, they're definitely qualified. But if they're like, yeah, you know, I maybe do like one, maybe two per month. It's like, you know, maybe you'll hear me out. Maybe I can downsell you to something. That's what the two call closes for. The call number one is just to make sure that they're interested. Hey, did you watch my video? Okay. Well, are you at least interested in to see what we got okay cool and then you have another opportunity to send them the video get them pre-sold but that call number one you're just qualifying them hey does this person even have the money hey is there anybody else that would need to be on the call to make a decision on something like this okay cool let's get them on the phone too so also making sure that everything is aligned so that when you get to the sales call all the odds are stacked in your favor so that they're gonna say yes so that's call number one qualifying them basically call number two is the actual sales call and I want you to know that if you're gonna have like a like a slideshow pitch deck or something like that keep it super simple we want it to be so easy to understand and so easy to be a yes. We take them through five steps of the sale, which is the intro, setting expectations. Hey, welcome in guys. I don't really have a script. I just wanna show you guys what we got. If at any point, if you feel like you're not interested or if you have questions, just stop and ask me at any time. Okay, cool. That's the intro. Then we take them to qualifying questions. Okay, you told me that you're doing like X amount of deals. Okay, cool. And you said you're the one that makes the decision. Nobody else needs to be involved, right? Okay, cool. And then we take them through a short story, which is like oh, just a little bit about like the company and like how he started. Then we take them through the demo, which is showing them what we do. And the last part, which is the close. So it's just five simple steps. Again, like my whole point is the pitch deck or whatever you're showing them presenting in the sales call has to be super simple. Just try to make it as simple to understand as possible. And then the last thing is framing and qualifying. So as I was just saying, like in the beginning of the call, we try to qualify them and frame the call. Like after we ask the questions, we're like, okay, cool. So if I could show you something that like would really do good for your company and that would make sense for you, is there any reason why you wouldn't move forward today? You basically just want to get them to say yes before anything. And then it's like, okay, cool. Now the odds are stacked even more at your favor at the beginning of the call. So by the end, there should be no reason to say no. And if there is, it's like, you know what? Yeah, I got to think about it. Okay, well, earlier you told me there would no, there would be no reason why you wouldn't move forward. So what's stopping you from making a decision today, right? And it's not being rude, but it's just kind of challenging those objections because it's like, okay, you're definitely qualified. This could definitely help your business. You have the money to do it. You can make the decisions you said. What would really be stopping you from making a decision today? And you just want to find out what it is because it's either they don't trust you, they don't see the value, or they don't have the money. But if you've already qualified them enough, money shouldn't even be a question. It should at that point be something that you can control trust or value. So yeah, that's a pretty basic understanding of sales. Okay. And then we're just going to end it out with rendering service. So I'm just going to keep it very simple for you guys, because I'm just to be totally transparent. When I started my agency, I didn't have the skills to do fulfillment at all. So I had to rely on people 
to help me. I had to rely on white labels and people who had the skill to do what I was selling. And drop servicing is a very good business model. In the beginning, it's good for starters and you can kind of change it up from there. And that's actually how I transitioned from freelancing to having an agency. I was just selling other people's services. Essentially, let's just say you're gonna sell reputation management. You should probably talk to a white label first, which you can actually find on Fiverr and Upwork right now. So let's say you want to find somebody who can rank somebody's Google My Business higher so that they can get more calls and close more deals at the end of the day. Go to Fiverr, find people who do Google My Business reputation management, and then create an offer around that service. So rendering services you can do through Fiverr, through Upwork. And obviously the most important one is if you have the skill, because at that point, you're pretty much keeping all of the profit at the beginning before you have the money to actually delegate and hire a team. But if you can do the service, obviously that's the best. I didn't have that skill, but I knew how to run a business because my mentors taught me when I was working for them. They taught me how to delegate, how to build teams and build systems. And that's what I owe it all to. So rendering services is super important that either you can do it or you know how to hire somebody to do it. So if you guys have questions on this, please right now in the comments, leave me a message because I respond to usually every single person. I have a pretty small community community. So chances are I'll respond to you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. This is just a quick blueprint of what took me from zero to 150,000 within nine months of starting my agency. Just the simple blueprint. And we can go more into depth, which I already have in my other videos. So if you like the video, please make sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell because it's free and it really helps me. So with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys when I see you guys.